Welcome back to Formula One. Our primary focus on wind tunnels tonight. We're talking with Peter Windsor about America's team to be announced Formula One team debuting in 2010. You're saying, wait a minute, American team? That guy's a Brit. What's up with that? <laughs> British born, Australian raised. We think of you as one of our own. Your partner, Kenny Anderson, is American. It brings up a legitimate question. What does it mean, American team? How American? What has to be American about it? Well, everything. The car's going to be made in America. The team's going to be based in America. And once we'd established that, it was pretty logical to have American drivers. You're correct. Peter Wins is the odd one out there because <laughs> I've actually got a British passport. But my, my excuse is that I've actually worked for Speed or Fox for over 10 years now. Yeah, and you're, you're actually, one of us. you We're... guys, if it wasn't for Speed and what I've been able to do, lucky enough to be able to do on Formula One with you, I don't think we'd be doing a lot of what is happening with USF1 because it does have a profile. I am able to go to some people and speed, therefore, are very much a part of this of this program. Yeah. And thank you very much. Well, we like to we, we, we certainly want to see it happen. I don't speak for the network. I assume the engine will not be domestic. I can't imagine one of the big three going Formula One racing in this economy. <laughs> no, as much as it would be great to have one of the, the, the top three from Detroit. No. And in fact, the Formula One regulations wouldn't allow that anyway, because the engine is now frozen. The regulations yep. are frozen. You've got to run an engine from one of the existing Formula One suppliers. And we all know who those are, or most of us do. And it's just a question of doing a deal with one of those companies. And let's not forget, America is the biggest market for virtually every car company in Formula One. So, Those you know, I think there's going to be some interest yeah. in USF1. Why do this? What's the appeal for you at a personal level? What's the appeal for you? Well, I've known Kenny Anderson. I keep going back to Kenny because he is so critical to this. I've known Kenny since 85 when he was at Penske and he was running the damper program with Penske there and I was at Williams Formula One. And we became good friends then. Over here, we call them sharks. <laughs> yeah, sharks. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Fox sharks, uh, and then Penske sharks. Anyway, and then Quantum sharks. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, we we often talked about doing a team right, and in, in not in any way wanting to criticize other people, but doing it the way we would like to do it, which basically means skunk works. You know that that you remember the old the top secret Lockheed division sure, that, yeah. that that ran very very minimum number of the best people you could yep. get and and just kept everything lean and mean. Well, that was always our concept for doing a Formula One team. And whilst we were in a boom period and there was money falling out of the sky and, and hundreds of millions of dollars being spent in Formula One, we were always going to get laughed out of court probably mm. if we'd stood up and said, look, we can do a team very differently. But now, guess what? You know, the recession kind of makes us look a little bit more acceptable. And I think Formula One people now actually think, wow, these, you know, this is an interesting program. I had a phone call today from one of the top Formula One design engineers saying basically, fantastic. Congratulations. What a great program. So there is not unlike NASCAR, uh, where we, we saw teams show up at Daytona that had been created in 30 days out of whole cloth and a million bucks. Um, there is this window of opportunity created by the economic downturn. Yeah, always remembering that Formula One is a technical sport by definition, because in order to race, you've got to design and build your own car. You can't just buy a car off the shelf. That's what, always, that's what makes Formula One so difficult for new teams and new people. As I say, Ken and I have been thinking about this for about 20 years. But is, so, the, so the, I mean, all of that takes so much money. Exactly. The bottom line is the bottom line. Are yeah. you in a position tonight to tell me that you have the money? Yeah, we have the money to be what we need to be in 09, which is a race team building its cars to race in 2010 in the Formula One World Championship. Absolutely. We've worked very hard to get to this point. And, and literally, it's been in the last couple of weeks that we've got the money we need to be in 09. And it's a, it's a pleasure to say that, you know, and here we are. It. We're going to have an American Formula One team racing in 2010. Let's go to the first email of the night. It uh, deals with a, a very important issue. No, wait. Uh, do I want to do that now? I can't remember. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do the Danica email. Let's get that out of the way. We'll dispense with the last week's Danica story. <laughs> Trying to set up a U.S.-based Formula One team with an IRL driver like Danica sounds like a sideshow, not an F1 team. Pepe Le Pew. Associated Press uh, called Danica a candidate to fill one of the seats. By the time the blogger on the, the Guardian newspaper was done with it, I saw a headline that said, Danica Patrick, Formula One savior. I'm not making that up. The Internet's amazing. Danica says correctly, I think I'm flattered, but I've never even talked to these people. Is she a serious? 
serious candidate to drive your car. Well, it's nice to know she's flattered. We're flattered that she's flattered. Um, <laughs> she's definitely she on the list. Candidate? You know, all American drivers who have got the credentials, and she certainly does. And you're talking to a guy that saw her racing Formula Renault on in the wet at Silverstone yes. years ago. You know, I don't see her as an IRL driver. Lots happened since then, of course. But to me, she's you know she's definitely got road dust on her, and and she's a guy. She's a person that we should be looking at. But we're looking at everybody, and and when. Ken was asked, who are you looking at? And he said, we're looking at everybody. And the, and the questioner, in sort of Dave Despain fashion, said, but are you looking what at Danica, Danica Patrick? Right. And he said, we're looking at everybody. And, that and then the story the came out, we're looking at Danica Patrick. <clears throat> but Danica, yeah, you know, she's, she's fabulous. To clarify what you said earlier, you did say American drivers, plural. Your goal is to have two Americans. I did, Dave. That's what you said. I mean, there is a slight possibility that we might run one experienced driver, maybe therefore, by definition, not American, yeah. in year one. Maybe. We haven't actually address that issue in its entirety. These are all great subjects that we're sort of looking at for the first time because we've been working so hard just getting to the point we're at now. Now we can talk about drivers and engines and all the cool things. All you know? the fun stuff. Uh, regarding the primary focus of tonight's show, the soon to be announced American team debuting in Formula One in 2010. The question is, how soon to be announced? Well, the answer is Tuesday at noon Eastern to be exact. My friend Mr. Windsor and his partner Ken Anderson will be officially announcing the creation of this new team and that will be live right here on speed. Okay, let's get to it. We got press conference Tuesday. You come on my show tonight. I'm just guessing you're not going to tell us everything <laughs> we want to know because there'd be no reason to have the press conference. So I'll settle for the drivers, the sponsor, and the engine manufacturer. That's great, Dave. No problem at all. <laughs> I tell you, the one thing you do want to know is Ken Anderson. He is the key man in this whole operation. I'm just kind of struggling along in the background ah, in yes, the slipstream. Yes. How no, you seriously. Are. And that's what the 24th Tuesday noon is going to be all about. It's it's Ken and I, but it's the emphasis on Ken because he is the guy that's put this team together. It's his drive and it's his motivation and it's his brilliance actually. And and I hope we're going to be able to uh, to show that on the twenty fourth. But tonight, ask away. Let me rephrase the question: Does he have the tools that you need, given your situation? going forward you, you put a kid who's never driven a formula one car i mean you're going to need somebody who can help develop a car well the interesting thing is that if we're going to run an american by definition we'll be running a yes. driver except scott speed we'll be running a driver with no experience so once we've established that you know it's a very broad spectrum of drivers then that we can be talking to and from what i can see and i've never seen him drive but what i can see aj is very very good in the wet he's a hard trier he's, he's yep. a racer um he, he yeah i think he's exactly the sort of guy i think the french and the italians might have difficulty with his name perhaps but you know <laughs> the aj bit's quite easy joe machado is on the chat and wonders peter why will you succeed where so many others have failed i think of paul stoddard well, Hey, we're last. We'll get him next week. A guy who just seemed to be out there having fun and not really trying to compete. You mentioned winning races as a goal. Well, yeah, we wouldn't be doing this unless we felt we could win races in, in a reasonable time frame. But you've kind of answered a question because my question back was going to be, do you mean the other American attempts have failed or do you mean a lot of Formula One teams in general have failed? And if we're talking Formula One teams in general, my answer to that would be they've spent too much money the wrong way on the wrong people, basically. And that's the motivation for people like Ken and myself. And I'm sure there are others out there as well. You know, we walk down the pit lane and we look at virtually every garage with the exception of two or three. And you think, wow, you know, why are they doing it that way? That's a bit odd. Why are they doing this? Why are they spending money on that? Why have they got this driver? Why have they got that engineer? Yep. And, you know, the only way really, I mean, and I've been doing this journalistically and I've been doing it on the phone with Ken for a number of years, the only way really it, to stop all that is to get out and do it. And, and we believe, and I feel totally confident that we have an incredible lineup of brilliant people, enough people to justify it being a skunk works. And we are going to be successful and we're going to achieve what we set out to achieve. People who are willing to move to Charlotte, North Carolina, <laughs> for heaven's sake.